It's been a couple weeks, but we're back with a quick update here in the SEC versus Ripple case. The parties, the SEC and Ripple, have submitted to Judge Torres their proposed schedule for remedies, discovery, as well as briefing. We'll take a quick look at what that was. Again, just filed earlier today. And the crypto market's certainly been on a tear. XRP's gone up quite a bit, but has retraced some today. We'll take a quick look at the market and discuss. But if we haven't met before, my name's Frank Cho. I'm here to help you live a richer life. On this channel, we talk about cryptocurrency, personal finance, and investing. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, do it now. That way I can keep you informed of all the latest news and updates. All right, we'll take a quick look at the market before we dive in. 1.37 trillion for the crypto market, up over 2% on the day. Bitcoin is up 5% on the week. Ethereum, 11% on the week. XRP up almost 8% on the week, but has pulled back from having reached about 72 cents down to about 66 cents. So really interesting movements over the course of the last week with some positive news. Bitcoin up over 36,000, a pretty big mover, and hopefully will continue to help the entire market rise. Now, let's take a look at what's happened in the SEC versus Ripple case. We know from our most recent videos that Brad Garlinghouse and Chris Larson both had the charges against them uh, dropped by the SEC. And here we have now the remedies, discovery, and briefing. This was uh, put out here again today, November 9th, 2023, uh, addressed here to Judge Torres from the SEC. This coming from the people that we're pretty familiar with, right? Uh, Jorge Tenrero submitting this one-page document. We'll just run through it real quick. Pursuant to the court's October 24th scheduling order, the parties respectfully propose a schedule for remedies, discovery, and briefing. So here's what they want. The parties agree that permissible discovery will include facts occurring in the period before the filing of the SEC's complaint. The SEC proposes 90 days from the entry of a scheduling order by the court to conduct remedies-related discovery. Ripple is amenable to such a proposal so long as such discovery is limited to pre-complaint discovery. The SEC intends to seek certain discovery that postdates a complaint that it considers relevant to its claims for injunctive and monetary remedies, and Ripple reserves all rights to oppose such discovery, as I would imagine they will do. To the extent the SEC seeks such discovery and the court permits it, Ripple reserves all rights to petition the court for an extension of any discovery deadline. So the reason for this is they're trying to get all the pre-discovery or pre-filing discovery done in those 90 days. But Ripple may want more time if the SEC is allowed to do any uh, discovery related to items that happened after the SEC's filing. Remember, this was uh, three years ago coming up, uh, the anniversary here. And so because of that, we've got a lot of things that have happened since that filing. So opening up that window would certainly cause a need for more time for responses. Now, going right back into it here. The parties further agree that no later than 45 days after the entry of the scheduling order, Ripple may serve on the SEC as a superseding version of the proposed report by Anthony Bracco and within 90 days of the scheduling order, the SEC may depose him. The SEC reserves its right to submit a rebuttal report or submit the declaration of a summary witness to rebut the report and Ripple reserves its right to object to any such report. If sought by the SEC and permitted by the court, Ripple further reserves its right to seek discovery, including a deposition, with respect to any such expert or witness that is otherwise allowed by the federal rules of civil procedure, as well as reserves its right to seek an extension of the discovery deadline in the event a rebuttal report is served. So there you have it. Again, this is uh, as it pertains to the expert witness, timing related to this, and what we'll see as this goes on through the remedies phase. Again, we're looking at what these kinds of monetary penalties might be. We already know how the case is shaped up. Now it's just how does everything shake out here in the end? Will Ripple have to pay significant monetary fees to the SEC? Uh, will there be any uh, further discussion as far as um, those particular transactions, those uh, can, um, institutional transactions, how they try and quantify that. So there's more to come here, but certainly this discovery will lead us to some more concrete answers over the coming months. 
The parties agree that the discovery shall not be reserved on third parties in the first instance, but reserve the right to seek leave from the court pursuant to Rule 45 of the Federal Rules of Civil Procedure to serve third party discovery requests. Both parties also reserve the right to oppose any such request. The SEC may file its brief with respect to remedies at any time, but no later than 30 days after the remedies discovery period. Ripple shall file its opposition 30 days thereafter, and the SEC its reply 15 days thereafter. The remedies brief shall comply in all relevant aspects with the rule uh, of the court there in their individual practices, including length limitations. We saw the SEC try and eke in a little bit longer documents when this first started uh, a couple years back, but now they're saying that they'll comply, at least for now. So that's what we have. I'll post it in the video description if you want to see the document itself. Again, uh, there's nothing here mentioning any kind of settlement or cessation to the process. Uh, they will continue here throughout this schedule, try and figure out what they're going to do um, based on what they find in discovery. Uh, maybe there will be settlement talks there uh, throughout the process, or maybe not. We don't know for sure. We do know, though, that the discovery window for the remedies will be opened up. And again, they are agreed, mutually agreed, for that 90-day timeline there to start with. So we'll continue to monitor. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Will the SEC come out ahead here and be able to claim significant monetary penalties against Ripple, the company? We know Garlinghouse and Larson won't be held liable here for any reason. But will Ripple face those penalties and what might that mean for the company? And also, we hear lots of rumors and speculation around an IPO for Ripple. Will this have an impact on the timing or process for that? Remember, in order to have an initial public offering in the United States, you have to file with the SEC. So what would they uh, need to have happen to make sure that filing process goes through smoothly with their S1 statement and all of that? So we've got a lot more still to come as far as the progress of Ripple, the company. But as XRP holders, perhaps our interest is not in Ripple, the entity, because it's not a security, right? XRP is not a security in Ripple. It's a digital asset. And while Ripple does utilize the asset, they certainly are not the only entity or group of individuals using it. We certainly see XRP proliferate foreign money transmission, peer-to-peer uh, -peer payments, and so on, not to mention major partnerships. Ripple Swell was earlier this week. We saw that there are uh, various partnerships announced over the course of this week uh, with banks, with uh, nations. And so the growth of the XRP ledger will continue despite the SEC, as we've seen happen over the course of this entire trial, and will continue to move onward and upward. Let me know your thoughts down below. Drop a like if you found any value here in this video. It helps the channel a ton and helps me keep you informed. Hit that subscribe button so I can keep you up to date on all the latest news. Thank you so much for spending some time here with me. I do truly appreciate it. Have a fantastic rest of your day, and I will see you in the next one.